Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we are here today. My First of all, my name is Fran Watson. I am the president of the Houston GLBT Political Caucus. And we are here today in response to a bill that was filed just a few moments ago by um, behind with the, with the support of Lieutenant Dan Patrick. And that bill is a discriminatory, discriminatory bill that is singling out the transgender community. And so today we, as a community, stand in solidarity um, to one, denounce that bill. One, say that discrimination doesn't belong in Texas. To say that um, discrimination doesn't belong here, that all Texans should have access, all Texans should be able to move freely, all Texans who pay taxes are able to be here in the state and should not be forced to be put out somewhere. So with that, we are gonna have some speakers that come up and speak about this, and we're gonna go ahead and start with a business owner, uh, Jenny Chan Transweaver. Hello, I'm Jenny Tranweaver, and um, I believe that uh, our state senator is making a huge, grave mistake for Texas. As a business owner, it is bad for business. I've seen what's happened in Indiana and North Carolina, how major sporting events, large corporations, and businesses are giving, is having a reason to pull out of North, a backlash, thank you, pulling out of North Carolina. And um, I believe this bill is a discrimination bill against a very small, uh, already vulnerable and marginalized group of people, which is transgender children and adults. And as a friendly state, which is Texas motto, friendly state, this is a bill that's introducing hate and discrimination to our state. I'll say that in 16 years of business, bathrooms have never been an issue. I don't know why they're an issue now. There's been, never been one case of a transgender person uh, assaulting or hurting a non-transgender person in a restaurant. This shouldn't even be an issue. I've been in Houston 40 years. I've been in the bathroom in the Lion Hall. I've been in the Astrodome. I've been in the Rockets games. This is never an issue. Uh, transgender people, they're just people that need to use the restroom. So I think we have more important things as a state. The backlash we've seen I mean, the All-Star game next month is in New Orleans. It's not in North Carolina. It got pulled. Uh, NCAA Final Four has been pulled from North Carolina as well. I think Texas, the backlash that Texas could see is is not good um, from this. So here you go, Lee. Scott Tranweaver, Jenny Tranweaver from Jenny's Noble House. We have four Jenny's Noble House. We have four restaurants here in Houston. Um, we've, we're friends with transgender people. Uh, we've had transgender employees. They're just like me and you. They just live a different way every day. And there's nothing wrong with that. T-R-A-N-W-E-A-B-E-R. Thanks. One of the things that we always recognize is that while we do have these bills that are introduced, we know that there are folks that are in the legislature that are fighting and that are standing up for um, equality for all communities, standing up for difference. And so at this time, we'd like to bring up um, State Senator Sylvia Garcia. Y'all are beating up the um, remarks space here with all these microphones, but that's a good sign. Thank you all for being here on this very important topic. And Thank you to the Houston GLBT Political Caucus and community members who are here standing up against the bigotry demonstrated today in the filing of Senate Bill 6. The Lieutenant Governor and Senator Colpers clearly have not learned anything from the debacle in North Carolina and now they're willing to bring chaos, fear, and distractions to our great state. The Lieutenant Governor is deceptively calling this Senate Bill 6 a Privacy Protection Act. But really, this is just an unnecessary, job-killing bathroom bill that targets the very kids we need to protect. As existing laws are already in place to deal with any illegal activity in public spaces and bathrooms. Also, this bill is completely unenforceable. 
does the lieutenant governor expect us to have a PP patrol monitor all classrooms across the state? And imagine if we did that, how much that would really cost to all our hardworking taxpayers. This is nothing more than a job killing bill. It damages our economy and will lead to boycotts across our state. The Texas Association of Businesses estimates the economic backlash could cost our great state up to $8.5 billion, and that's billion with a B, and we could kill 185,000 jobs. Not to mention the ridicule and shame it would bring to our great state. I would love to say that we're going into the legislature to focus on the needs of the state that have been ignored for years, but unfortunately, I do not see that happening. Instead of improving failing classrooms, we're here talking about bathrooms. Instead of focusing on funding for our foster care kids, we're here talking about funding PP patrols to profile our kids. It's really quite sad that despite the real issues we face as a great state, our leadership gets bogged down in these social issues that are only meant to distract us. I promise you, I will fight and fight hard to kill this bad bill and put focus on addressing the real issues that Texans care about, job growth, education funding, and solutions to public transportation. Collectively, my colleagues and I have filed over 15 bills in the House and the Senate that will prohibit LGBTQ discrimination in housing, public accommodations, and employment, while repealing antiquated laws targeting the LGBT community and addressing issues like school bullying and enhancing HIV-AIDS prevention programs. During session, I and many of my colleagues will fight for local control so that cities and municipalities can keep their ordinances and laws that protect the LGBT community. In today's political climate, we may not see a comprehensive non-discrimination law passed this session, but we are certainly going to organize and stop hate bills like Senate Bill 6. And we're going to need all of us here standing today and all of you out there today to make sure that we fight hate in this great state. Let's not focus on bathrooms, let's focus on classrooms. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lou Weaver. I'm the Transgender Programs Coordinator for Equality Texas. I was not born here in this great state, but I got here as fast as I could. And unfortunately, this state is telling me right now that as an openly transgender man, that I am not the same as everybody else, that I don't deserve the same equality and the same protections. This is what I'm fighting every day to prove that transgender people deserve respect, we deserve equality and equity to be able to live and move among our communities as one with everybody else. Today, I have the great privilege of introducing to you two people. One, Reagan White, an openly transgender woman. She's gonna tell about how this bill affects her. And then Kimberly Shapley, the mom of a transgender five-year-old who is going to tell us how this affects her and her family. Thank you. Good afternoon, thank you. Um, I want to address Mr. Patrick directly. Mr. Patrick, like you, I am a proud Texan. Mr. Patrick, like you, I am a Christian. The reality is so. This bill is judgment and is hateful. We are called as Christians or as human beings to love and accept each other, period. That's the bottom line. That's what we do. This bill is harmful. It is dangerous to each and every member of the change in the community. It is putting our lives in grave danger. And I need you to understand that. It's a very serious thing. It's a very serious topic. What we are asking you today, not asking you, what we want you to reconsider is that we deserve freedom and that we deserve equality and that we deserve respect. Like you and many up here, sir, we are homeowners, we are parents, and we are voters. And we will not forget during the next election season, we vote. 
and we matter. And like I always say, sir, I love you, and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. But I would only wish you to reconsider your, this bill. Thank you. transgender child and this bill is based on fear and discrimination. Both of these can be dispelled very easily by educating yourself. If this is really important to you on either side of the issue, educate yourself by reading the science, reading the psychology, find good resources, the kinds you would use if you were turning in an argumentative paper to your English professor. Study. Find out the truth. And that's how we dispel the fear and the discrimination behind this. I'm also asking you to exercise empathy. Empathy. This little girl. I'm asking you to have empathy for this little girl. She is a Texan. She is a Texan just like every one of us here. There are thousands of little Texans just like my child in this state. You may not know that you know them, but you do. The chances of you knowing a transgender child are the same as the chances of you knowing a redhead. You know one. You just don't know that they're transgender. And I'm asking you to just dig in and get that empathy and get the education that you need before you continue to fight on either side of this issue. They talk about the danger in the restrooms. The real danger is sending this child into a men's restroom. That's real danger, not fictitious danger that fear has invented. I too am a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, and I pray. I pray for our leaders to make wise, righteous, loving decisions for every citizen. I heard the senator earlier speaking, Lois K, <laughs> and she said that they are making provisions in the educational portion of the bill for emergency situations, and that has me very excited because transgender youth who are not supported in their gender identity have a 42% suicide rate, and I consider that an emergency. My hope is that my fellow Texans will let their voices be heard, just as the North Carolina citizens allowed their voices to be made clear during their state election. Discrimination is, and fear is expensive, and the cost is far greater than just the economy. My daughter is singled out every time she has to use a nurse's restroom instead of the girl's restroom at school. My daughter needed to potty and the nurse wasn't in her office and the door was locked. The story that I got from my crying daughter at home was that she was very embarrassed and she was very sad because she peed herself and she peed on the floor and people witnessed that. I'm asking you again to find your empathy. A true privacy act would not ask a Texan about their private parts before they potty. I'm asking my elected officials and my fellow Texans to be on the right side of history. Discrimination has never won, not once. I'm asking you to be on the right side of love because love never fails. And I'm asking you to protect all of our children and all of our citizens. I just want to follow up with one thing that our elected officials told us this morning. They are acting to protect all Texans, but they're not. They are not protecting Kai. They're not protecting Reagan. They're not protecting me. They are singling out Texans who they don't want protected because they think we are other. And as Kimberly has asked, please show empathy for everybody that comes to Texas, that lives in Texas. We need everybody in this together. Thank you. 
First of all, I'd like to just say uh, thank you. As we stand here today, we are a coalition and we are moving, standing in solidarity. And we have several organizations represented. We have Black Lives Matter Houston represented. We also have Equality Texas, ACLU. We have um, Transgender Sisters United for Change. We have so many organizations that are represented today. And we have folks that all of us are Texans and we deserve protection. We deserve protection. We don't need to be, we don't have, need to have um, folks singled out, vilified, because at the end of the day, it's humanity that matters. And so with that, um, we would like to take some questions, if you have any. And we also have um, the speakers, and we have representatives that are here that are also um, available for questions afterwards. So if there are no questions, then I guess we're done. Thank you. We'll be around. Thank you all. Thank you.